Namaste. Today I am going to talk about the functional area of cerebrum. Before starting with the functional area of the cerebrum, I would like to inform you that the lobes of the cerebrum has been covered already. And I have already uploaded the video for the lobes of cerebrum. Before starting with the functional area of the cerebrum, I would like to request you to go through my the previous video so that this topic will be clear for you. Hope you are going to like it and subscribe my channel. Now the functional area of the cerebrum. The functional area of the cerebrum has been divided into three parts. The motor area, the sensory area, and the association area. The motor area, this portion is known as the motor area. This motor area is associated with the motor function. This portion is known as the sensory area. It is primarily concerned with the sensory functions. And the associated areas not concerned with the primary motor area or the sensory function but have the important associative, integrative and the consecutive function. Now the functional area that is present in the frontal lobe. The first one is the primary motor area. This portion, what you have seen, this portion, this portion is known as the primary motor area. This primary motor area is present within the gyrus. This gyrus is known as the precentral gyrus. It is located on the superior lateral surface of the cerebrum. This primary motor area is also located into the medial surface of the cerebrum. Within this medial surface of the cerebrum, there is the present the paracentral lobules. The anterior part of the paracentral lobules represent as a primary motor area. This portion is known as the area number 4. The primary motor area consists of the 40% of the pyramidal fibers which arises from this area. The specific region within this area are the responsible for the movements in the specific map parts of the body. Now the primary motor area represent as the motor functions and it represents the human body in the upside down. That means the uppermost part that is present in the medial surface, it is controlled by the foot, then the low limb, then it comes to the superior lateral surface, that is the hip bone, trunk, arm, hand, then comes the face, tongue and the laryngeal area. It moves upside down. The one more function that is present in the frontal lobe that is the premotor area. This portion is known as the premotor area. This is the motor area that is the primary motor area and this portion is known as the premotor area. This premotor area This premotor area is located to the anterior to the primary motor area. This portion is known as a primary motor area. Anterior to that, there is a place of the one more motor area. This portion is known as a premotor area. It is present in the posterior part of the superior, medial and the inferior frontal gyrus. It extends from the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Then it comes to the another surface that is the superior lateral surface of the 
variable hemisphere. The function of it, it is responsible for the successful performance of the voluntary motor activities initiated in the primary motor area. Now the one more area that is present in the frontal lobe, that is the area number four, which is sorry, area number eight, which is also known as the frontal eye field. This portion is known as the area number eight. It is also known as the frontal eye field. It is located just posterior to this gyrus which is present in the frontal lobe, this is known as a medial frontal gyrus. Now what is the function of this frontal eye field is that it is responsible for the conservative movements of the eyes to the opposite side. Now one more function that is present that is the motor speech area of the broca, which is the area number 44 and the 45. This portion which is present, this portion is known as area number 44 and this portion is known as area number 45. The area number 45 is known as the pars triangularis and the area number 44 is known as the pars opercularis. And it is located into the inferior frontal gyrus of the frontal lobe of the cerebral hemisphere. Now the next function that is present in the cerebral hemisphere, that is the primary sensory area, that is the area number 3, 2, 1. This portion is known as the area number 3, 2, 1 and this portion is known as the primary sensory area. It is located in the gyrus, this gyrus is known as the post-central gyrus. And also it extends from the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere and that loop is known as the posterior part of the paracentral lobules, which is present on the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Within this, the opposite half of the body is represented the upside down exactly in the same fashion as in the primary motor area. Now the sensory association area. The sensory association area occupies the superior parietal lobe corresponding to the area number 5 and the 7 of the Broca's area. Now this portion is known as the parietal lobe and in the superior part of the parietal lobe there is the area number 5 and the area number 7 and this area is known as the sensory association area. What is the function of the area number 5 and the 7 is that it is concerned with the perception of the shape, size, roughness and the texture of the object. It enables the individual to recognize the object placed in his or her hand without seeing. Such ability is referred to as the stereognosis. sensory speech area of the vernix. It is located in the left dominant hemisphere occupying the posterior part of the superior temporal gyrus of the temporal lobe and the angular area which is known as area number 39 and the supramarginal area which is known as area number 40 gyrus of the inferior parietal lobe. Now this portion is known as the Wernicke's speech area. Within this, it is located with the angular gyrus, that is the area number 39. And one more gyrus that is present, this gyrus is known as a supramarginal gyrus, which is the area number 40. Now this Wernicke's speech area is concerned with the understanding of the speech. That means, 
interpretation of the language to the visual and the auditory input. Now the function area that is present in the temporal lobe. Within this temporal lobe, there is a present of the primary auditory area, the area number 41 and the 42. This portion is known as area number 41 and the 42. It is located on the superior surface of the superior temporal gyrus, occupying the anterior transverse temporal gyrus. Now next area that is present, the secondary auditory area, which is known as the associated area, the area number 22. This portion is known as the area number 22. Now, it is located on the lateral surface of the superior temporal gyrus, slightly posterior to the primary auditory area which is surrounded. Within this, the primary and the secondary auditory area receive the fibers from the medial geniculate body through the auditory relations. The cochlea are bilaterally represented, therefore, a lesion in one cortex doesn't cause the unilateral deafness. Now, the function area that is present in the occipital lobe. Within this occipital lobe, there is present the primary visual area. It is also known as a straight area, the area number 17. This portion is known as the area number 17. This portion is known as the area number 17. It is mainly located on the medial surface of the occipital lobe, in the walls and the floor of the posterior part of the calcarean sulcus. Then after that, it extends around the occipital lobe on the lateral surface of the occipital lobe as far as the lunate sulcus. The most marked structural feature of the visual cortex is the presence of the white line which is known as a visual stride of the genera, hence it is also known as a striped area. This portion, you can see this portion, this portion is known as a primary visual area which extends from the medial surface and coming to the lateral surface of the occipital lobe. Now the secondary visual area, that is the area number 18 and the 19. The primary visual area is present on the medial and the lateral surface of the occipital lobe, which is occupied by secondary visual area. Now this portion, you can see this portion, this portion is known as the primary visual area. And you can see superior to this, it is occupied the another visual area. This is known as the secondary visual area, the area number 18 and 19. The visual cortex re receive the efferent fibers from the lateral genicular body to the optical relation. Now this is the pathway, the visual pathway. The detail of the visual part will come into the special films. Now the visual cortex receives the fibers from the temporal half of the ipsilateral retina and the nasal half of the contralateral retina. That means it registers the impulses from the opposite field of the visions. Now the right half of the field of the vision is represented into the visual cortex of the left cerebral hemisphere and the vice versa. That is the visual pathway. Now what is the important is that it is important to know that the impulses coming from the superior retinal quadrants that is present in the inferior field of the vision pass through the superior wall of the calcarean sulcus. Now this portion is the calcarean sulcus which is present in the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. 
In the superior part, you can see this is the upper quadrant. This is the superior part. And this is the inferior part. While in the inferior retinal quadrants, the superior field of the vision passes through the inferior wall of the calcarean sulcus. That means this portion is the inferior part of the calcarean sulcus. And this portion is the superior part of the calcarean sulcus. Now, within this calcarean sulcus, what will happen is that the macular area, which is the central part of the retina, and responsible for the maximum visual acuity has the extensive cortical representation occupying the proximity posterior one third of the visual cortex. That means this whole portion is known as a visual cortex. In the posterior part of the visual cortex, it is occupied by the the Raise the the fibers that comes from the macular macular area of the retina. That is present in the posterior one third of the visual cortex. These are the functional area of the cerebral hemisphere, which is present in the cerebrum. Okay, hope you're going to like it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.